Hello, everyone, and welcome to our 31st and final lecture in our course on drugs and behavior. Uh, as I mentioned in an announcement last week, uh, this lecture won't cover any new material, so no need to worry about that. Uh, this is more to uh, package the entire course, to look at uh, the course from sort of a broad perspective. What, what did we learn? Um, and then also to cover the final exam. Uh, what things we should focus on, how you might approach studying for the final. Uh, and so that, those are sort of the two parts of this, of this lecture, but uh, neither of them will introduce any new material. Uh, so to wrap up the course, the big question, of course, is, is what have we learned? Uh, and at sort of a, a, a low-lying and, and glib level, we've learned about different types of drugs, and, and there are certainly lots of those. Uh, some of them you may have been familiar with, some perhaps not. Uh, certainly things like alcohol, tobacco, uh, marijuana, we've all heard of. Um, but some you may not have, uh, especially the psychotherapeutic drugs, uh, or some of the stimulants, perhaps. And we've also learned about the history of these drugs and how uh, different societies have looked at drugs uh, and how individuals have used drugs. Uh, and then so we've also looked at how drugs have been used and what effects they have, uh, both at the physiological level, the psychological level, the behavioral level, and finally the societal level. Uh, but it, it's not the purpose of the course to try to distill drugs and drug use down into uh, a series of, of facts. Um, although the facts are important, uh, there are also bigger picture issues those facts can, can lead us to think about, uh, especially with regard to the discussions we've had uh, during the course. And in fact, the, the purpose of, of those discussions uh, is to engage our critical thinking. And of course, many of the discussion questions intentionally don't have a solid answer. Uh, there is no go-to response for what we should do about a particular drug-related issue. Uh, but they do make us think about what all the relevant aspects of the issue are. Uh, so one thing we've learned about is the relationship uh, between drugs and the brain and behavior. Uh, so drugs are, of course, just chemicals. Um, they don't have moral value. They don't have intentions. They're just chemicals. Um, but once we introduce them to the brain, they can act on the brain in more or less specific ways. Some drugs are very specific. Uh, some, like alcohol, are a little less specific or have broader effects. Uh, but in any case, they all affect the brain, and so the brain is what controls our behavior. Uh, and so that's what determines our behavior. And of course, that itself becomes an issue uh, when we try to assess responsibility for our actions, for example. Uh, is someone completely responsible if they're on drugs? Are they completely responsible for taking drugs if they're already addicted? Uh, but if they're not, then how do we deal with drug-related crime? Uh, how do we deal with other behavioral transgressions uh, that occur when someone's under the influence of drugs? And these are difficult issues. We've discussed them. Uh, not that we came up for with a uh, definitive answer, because it's not an easy question to answer. Uh, we've also, hopefully, in this course, uh, dispelled some misconceptions about drugs. Uh, and, of course, misconceptions come in both positive and negative varieties. Uh, so if you were of the opinion that drugs are entirely bad and don't have a place in our, uh, in our society as, as medicines, um, then hopefully I've dis disabused you of that notion. Um, if you think that drugs are always a positive experience and are gateways into a deeper understanding of the world, then perhaps I've just dis disabused you of that notion as well. Um, it's, it, again, is a complex issue. Uh, they're neither entirely good nor entirely bad. And in fact, mo most of the negative consequences uh, occur with chronic use, and especially with dependence. And these effects, these negative effects, can of course be at the individual level or be at the societal level uh, via an individual's behavior. Uh, but in any case, it's a mixed bag for virtually every drug. Some drugs are certainly more harmful than others. Uh, but the idea is that, that drugs are, are not inherently good or bad, certainly, but even that in terms of their effects, their consequences, they're not entirely good or bad. Um, also, it's important to distinguish, and we did this at the very beginning, the very first lecture, uh, to distinguish between things like drug use and drug abuse. 
Uh, so virtually all of us have used a drug at some point or another in our lives, uh, whether it's a psychotherapeutic drug, uh, whether it is an over-the-counter medication, um, whether it's a recreational drug, something like alcohol or tobacco. Um, and, and so those are examples of drug use. But when people say drug use just in everyday conversation, uh, what they usually mean is either illicit, but especially uh, overuse or misuse of drugs and drug abuse. And those are actually two different uh, concepts, and hopefully we emphasize that throughout the course. Um, of course, talking about drug abuse, uh, there are also misconceptions there. So the, the prevalence of addiction rates for particular drugs. Um, certain drugs, especially drugs like cocaine and heroin, uh, the popular idea is that it is easy to become addicted to these drugs, that most people who use them uh, will become addicted even after a single use. And the fact is that's just not true. Um, which is not to say that for those that are addicted, there aren't serious negative consequences, or that you can't do harm to yourself after a single use. Um, and of course, that's something else we've discussed as well, is whether it is good, bad, and different, that we as a society tend to portray, uh, or certainly recreational drugs, as a negative influence, and perhaps over portray that negative influence. We exaggerate the negative consequences of drugs, uh, in hopes that, that fewer individuals will try them. And of course, this gets us into what, what is our model for drug abuse? That is, why do people use drugs in the first place? Why do they continue to use drugs? Why do they become dependent? Uh, and this is also interacts with our history, with our society's history uh, with drugs. Of course, first, of course, we have the moral model that people who use drugs were weak-willed uh, or were some in some way inferior uh, to those who didn't. Uh, and of course, as research has been conducted and as our society has evolved, uh, we've come to have a different understanding of, of drug use. Um, that in many cases, people use drugs to alleviate uh, either a physical symptom like pain uh, or some emotional distress. Um, so they, they, they are in effect self-medicating. Uh, not in all cases, but in, in, in many cases that is the case. Uh, so our, our model has evolved, and in terms of being a, being dependent on drug, uh, is it that people continue to use drugs to avoid withdrawal symptoms? Uh, is it they continue to use drugs because they are reinforcing, they have pleasurable effects that uh, are basically initiating learning behaviors? Uh, is it that it's just a habit? And the truth is probably a combination of all three factors. Uh, but it does inform our understanding of how we treat drug abuse once, it, once it's already begun, uh, and also how we try to prevent drug abuse. Uh, and of course, over history, we've had a shifting perceptions as a society. Um, and some of these perceptions have gotten more strict, uh, more condemning of drug use, uh, and some have gotten more relaxed. And of course, some have fluctuated one way and then the pendulum has swung back. Uh, so for example, alcohol. Uh, alcohol use has been pervasive for thousands of years. Uh, in the US, we had a period in the 1800s and early 1900s where alcohol use was strongly discouraged by certain segments of society. Uh, but of course that eventually weakened as well. Um, and now we have sort of a moderate stance on alcohol use. Um, but it's also true for things like marijuana, cannabis, um, that marijuana use was condemned at the turn of the 20th century and was really condemned for most of the 20th century. And attitudes have, sh have relaxed somewhat since then. Uh, however, for drugs like morphine, heroin, the, the opioids, um, at first it was a very laissez-faire attitude. Uh, there was no, there were really no regulations, and the regulations came into being um, and have gotten stronger uh, as time has gone on. So uh, some drugs we sort of have a moderate stance on. We permit it, but don't necessarily encourage it. Um, some of our attitudes are becoming more relaxed, and some are becoming more strict. Uh, and we can put, anytime we talk about drugs and drug use uh, and the legal penalties, societal attitudes, uh, we can now hopefully understand that these have evolved over time. Um, that where we are now is not where we were 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, uh, in terms of how we 
understand drug use. Um, we understand it at a more biological level now, uh, but also our understanding of why people do it and what should be done in response uh, has changed. And so we were living in a very uh, specific time in terms of our attitude toward drug use and drug abuse. Um, so it would be a mistake to think that our attitude now is the way it always has been or the way it always will be. Uh, and of course, as a society, we represent a mixture of attitudes. Um, so these are all bigger picture uh, issues that I hope the course has uh, imparted to you. Okay, this week uh, we'll have our final exam. Uh, incidentally, uh, because when I'm recording this, I'm recording this before there are any discussion board posts, uh, so I'll just have to respond to the discussion board uh, in the board itself. Uh, the final exam is this week. It's due by 11.59 p.m. this Friday, uh, so our usual time for when assignments are due. Uh, it is a lot like the midterm exam, so it is closed book, closed notes. Uh, it is an independent effort exam, so you cannot work with, on this exam uh, with another student from class or anyone else for that matter. So you need to do this uh, by yourself. Uh, you will need to Respondents Lockdown Browser, just like you did for the midterm. Uh, hopefully you still have the Respondents Lockdown Browser. You've already downloaded it. Uh, you're familiar with it at this point. Uh, one of the reasons that we're using the Lockdown Browser uh, is that this is a timed exam. Uh, and so you'll have 90 minutes, just like you did for the midterm. Uh, and those 90 minutes need to be consecutive. Um, so you cannot take a break and go back to it the next day, for example. Once you start the exam, you have 90 minutes to finish it. Uh, the format will also be very similar to the midterm uh, in terms of what kinds of questions I'll ask. So there will be multiple choice questions. I'll give you a question, you pick the right answer. Uh, there will be fill in the blank questions. You have to complete a sentence with one of a, a number of options uh, that best completes that sentence. And then you'll have short answer questions. So I'll ask you a question, and in your own words, you come up with a couple or a few sentences uh, that you think best answers that. Uh, in terms of what's on the exam, uh, it will be everything since the midterm. So everything from psychotherapeutic drugs through last week's unit on prevention and treatment. Uh, so psychotherapeutic drugs and caffeine were covered during the week of the midterm, but they were not actually tested on the midterm. Um, so they'll be included on this final. And, of course, as always, the content will come from a combination of textbook uh, and lecture. As we'll see, the textbook and lectures are fair game, but it makes more sense to concentrate on the lecture material. Uh, that's the material that I think is the most important out of the textbook. Uh, and, of course, sometimes there's material in the lectures uh, that isn't in the textbook. Uh, and the reverse is true as well, but if I don't cover it in the lecture, uh, you don't need to pay as much attention to that uh, as the material I do cover. That's what I'm really emphasizing. Uh, it's going to be evenly spread across the modules. So there will be questions about psychotherapeutic drugs and caffeine. There will be questions about performance-enhancing drugs uh, and drug treatment and prevention. So in all the lectures in between. So we're covering a wide range of material, but there's no need to concentrate on any one particular topic because we're going to cover it all. Uh, as before, you don't need to know the chemical names and the brand names independently. I'll always give you both. Uh, so you don't need to, to memorize the match of the mapping between those two. Uh, and also, as before, uh, the practice quizzes that are posted as part of the course, I know a lot of you have taken them. Um, if you haven't, I would encourage you to try them before you start the final. Uh, again, as with the midterm exam, uh, the final, once you start it, you have to complete it in one sitting. That's one of the reasons I require the Respondents Lockdown Browser. Uh, you can't start the exam, take a break, and then come back to it. Uh, and, and for the style of questions that you're going to be asked, uh, the practice quizzes are a good introduction to that. Obviously, you've already taken the midterm, too, so you know some about what sort of questions will be asked. Um, but the practice quizzes also emphasize the content that's in the lecture uh, and that I think is important. Okay, so I've given you the starting point and the end point in the course where the, for what the final exam will cover, um, but let's just list everything just to be on the safe side. Uh, so we looked at a lot of different drugs and classes of drugs 
in the second half of the course. The first half of the course, we talked about uh, things like stimulants and the depressants, uh, but we had sort of just started to get into those, and we had spent more time about on the history of drugs, on drug regulation, certainly on how the brain works, how the brain is organized. Um, and now, for the second half of the course, uh, it's, it's really going into drugs in depth, and so it's going to be more about individual drugs, what differentiates one set of drugs from another, uh, what drugs do. Uh, and so just to, to give you the, the complete list of what we covered, uh, we covered psychotherapeutic drugs, so drugs that are designed to uh, treat mental illness. Uh, caffeine, we spent a lecture on caffeine. Uh, alcohol, of course, has been a, a big theme. We keep on coming back to it for our policies for how it affects the brain. We spent a whole week on it. Tobacco, again, another popular recreational drug. Uh, marijuana. Uh, hallucinogens. And hallucinogens, of course, there are a variety of hallucinogens, just as there are a variety of psychotherapeutic drugs. So these categories actually themselves contain multiple drugs. Uh, similarly, dietary supplements and over-the-counter drugs. Um, so these are, of course, legal, which is one of the differences between them and some of the uh, other recreational drugs. Uh, but they're also one of these categories that contain multiple compounds. Uh, the opioids, so those pain-killing agents, some of which are legal by prescription, some of which are illegal, um, but they all, of course, ultimately derive from the opium poppy, or at least uh, are similar to compounds in that category. Uh, we wrapped up with performance-enhancing drugs, uh, which are, of course, things like steroids and stimulants, which isn't a, a category of drug uh, usually thought of when the topic of performance-enhancing drugs comes up. And then finally, we talked about drug prevention and treatment. So that's sort of a separate unit unto itself. The others, of course, are all drugs. They all have origins and histories, legal statuses. They all have their effects, both acute and chronic. Um, so you can sort of compare all of those things across those uh, various categories of drug. Drug prevention and treatment is, again, sort of its own separate little unit. Uh, so what do you want to focus on? Again, the lectures are the best guide as to what material is going to be used for the final. Uh, but for each drug, what you should be able to do uh, when you're, as you're preparing for the exam uh, is describe a variety of characteristics. Uh, so, for example, where did the drug come from? And this means both the source of the drug, so in the case of uh, marijuana, the psychoactive ingredient, or one of them, uh, is THC. So it comes from the cannabis plant. That's its source. Uh, and where did the cannabis plant first come from? Well, Central Asia and India. Um, so there's both the source, i.e. what plant it comes from, and in se for, for some of the drugs, there's a location. So some of the natural occur naturally occurring products, uh, like tobacco, marijuana, some of the hallucinogens, um, there's a location that they orig originated from. Alcohol, of course, multiple cultures invented it, came up with the ways to uh, create alcoholic beverages. Uh, so you can't answer this question for all of them, uh, but for many of the drugs you can. Of course, some are synthetic also. You don't need to know what country the drug was first synthesized in. That's not as important. Um, but if it's a natural product, where it comes from says something about its history. Uh, so mechanism, mechanism of action. How does the drug work? Uh, and here, for all, all of these drugs, it's important to know what receptors in the brain these drugs act on. Do they activate the receptor? Do they inhibit the receptor? What neurotransmitter system is involved? Uh, if these receptors belong to a family, uh, where in the body, other than the brain, do these occur? What, is that, what do we know about that? What, what, what does that mean for the body and how the body functions? Uh, understanding the effects. So we have the mechanism of action, how the drug acts on the brain, and then once the brain and the body are affected by the drug, what happens? Uh, so as before, we have acute and chronic effects. So acute are the short term, chronic are the long term effects. Uh, we also have physiological and behavioral effects. Physiological, of course, are those things that happen to the body. Behavioral are the behaviors we exhibit. How is behavior changed uh, when these drugs are taken? And, of course, you can mix those. You can have acute physiological, acute behavioral, 
chronic physiological and chronic behavioral effects. Uh, the legal status. So are these drugs scheduled by the Controlled Substances Act? Are they on Schedule 1, Schedule 3? Uh, are they available over the counter, by prescription, behind the counter? Uh, so it's good to know the legal status of these drugs. Um, what are they used for in the case there is a legitimate use? Uh, of course, even recreationally, some drugs are used for uh, gaining more energy and then some of the performance enhancing drugs. Some are used to relax. Uh, some are used in religious ceremonies. Um, so that even if there isn't a prescribed use, there might still be a recreational use. Um, another thing to look at is, are they effective? Uh, so for many of the drugs, especially the opioids, the answer is a pretty resounding yes. Um, but do hallucinogens actually enhance creativity? Probably not. Um, some of the performance enhancing drugs, there's limited evidence on whether they actually enhance performance. Um, so know what the, use, the drugs are used for, uh, but also whether they're effective for that use, what the evidence is. Uh, if a person becomes dependent on them, how, what, what, what is the treatment? Uh, is it agonist therapy? You have the nicotine patch, for example. Um, for alcohol, if you go into alcohol withdrawal, what, what do you use? Um, to try and wean someone off of alcohol. Uh, what do you do for opioids? And of course, this has been the topic of discussion questions as well. Um, what the ethical implications are for treatment uh, for dependence. And also the history of use. Uh, so some of these drugs are synthetic and don't have as long a history, but especially for those naturally occurring substances, it's good to know the history of use, the forms uh, in which the drug has been taken, for example. Uh, and also the history of use interacts with our, uh, our legal reaction as a society. So how have laws evolved, particularly with regard to uh, things like alcohol, tobacco, marijuana. Uh, so that's a long list, of course, um, but it, it's a good way to categorize your knowledge. Uh, if you want to use flashcards to test yourself on knowing those things, that's a good way to go. You could even create a chart. So for every category of drugs, you can answer where it comes from, what kind of receptor does it work on, what are the effects, both chronic and long term, or both chronic and acute. Um, so these are all different ways to study and making sure that you know the relevant information. Uh, so in addition to those things, which are sort of easy to put into a table, uh, I would also focus on the history of some of the more popular drugs and some of the uh, drugs which are more specific in terms of their intent. So, uh, for example, we have psychotherapeutic drugs. And, of course, those are designed with a particular mental illness in mind. Uh, so you have to have an understanding of those mental illnesses. So what are the symptoms of uh, mood disorders? What are the symptoms of schizophrenia? Uh, how do these drugs address those issues? Uh, so the, the mental illness and the treatment thereof through these drugs. Uh, alcohol, of course, being one of the oldest naturally occurring drugs, uh, has a long history with our society globally, but also society in the U.S. Uh, and so I would focus on that, the history of alcohol and alcohol regulation uh, in our society and what effects those regulations have had. And then finally, the history of tobacco use. So tobacco, of course, is a new world discovery, uh, but it comes in a variety of forms. Uh, and it's our attitudes as a society toward tobacco have changed over time as well. Also, uh, the hallucinogens are an interesting category because there's quite a few of them, uh, and there are a number of categories, uh, which makes them sort of unique in our, uh, in our course here, uh, because there are different categories that actually are important because those categories have different effects. So be sure you understand what those different categories are, what belongs to those categories, uh, and what those categories are based on. Is it a chemical designation? Uh, is it a, a categorization based on uh, the effects that the drug has? So do that uh, mainly for the hallucinogens. And then, of course, as I mentioned, drug prevention and drug treatment uh, are sort of a separate unit unto themselves. They don't really fit into that, uh, that graph scheme where we can have a chart of where it comes from what receptors it affects, what's the legal history, 
um, what are the long-term effects. We can't really plot it in that way. So for drug prevention and treatment, you know, know the different kinds of prevention approaches, treatment approaches. Um, so it's sort of a separate unit unto itself, but it's also going to be on the exam, so be sure to study it. Okay, and with that, I will wrap up not just this lecture, uh, but the course as a whole. Uh, and so I hope that this course has been enjoyable. I certainly enjoyed teaching it. Uh, I think, especially the discussions were thought-provoking. Hopefully you enjoyed those as well. Uh, hopefully it made you think about drug-related issues in a way you hadn't before. Uh, I hope that you come away with knowledge that you didn't have before. So how drugs work biologically, how our society has responded to drugs, how individuals uh, respond to drugs, both physiologically and behaviorally, uh, especially in the long term. So these are all things you might not have uh, been familiar with, but hopefully you are now. Uh, and with that, I will say good luck on the final exam and have a good break.